I I'll fuck this out. What's up guys? It's your girl Sylvia. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what up? <laughs> I pretty much just make cooking videos. Now I'm no chef Gordon Ramsay or nothing like that. I'm just a regular amateur at home chef. And I burn food on occasion. I over season my stuff sometimes. But that's the beauty of learning. So I'm in this with you. We trying to figure this thing out, okay? So um, if you're into that type of stuff, then subscribe to this channel. So on today's video, I figured I've been making so many aguas frescas that I'm like, dang, okay, I really miss like cooking videos. So I decided, you know what? I am gonna make some gorditas today. So I figured I'd record this because why not? So. On today's episode of Cooking with Sylvia, I still haven't came out with anything better than that. Just cooking with Sylvia is so basic. But anyways, um, on today's episode, we are going to be making gorditas de pico de, pico de gallo. <laughs> I can never talk. I don't know what my issue is, but as soon as I'm in front of the camera, all of a sudden, I don't know how to talk. We are making gorditas, <laughs> the picadillo. Aguanta corazón, no seas cobarde. Okay, so picadillo is like a Mexican style ground beef, pretty much. Before we get into this video, in the comment section down below, comment the little like uh, what is like a little plate with the fork and the spoon? Yeah, comment that and I will show you guys some love back. Let's get to the video First things first. I already went ahead and put on my frijoles early this morning So if you guys um, don't really want to do this stuff, you don't have to just buy the canned beans I don't really care. That's your business. I like to make my own beans most of the time But I have no problem eating canned beans. That's just me. I'm very humble. So I don't care <laughs> If you guys want to know what I put inside of my beans when I make them very simple this is this is the very um how do i not normal the very easy way of making beans just a regular schmegular nothing crazy this is just everyday use beans okay so after that you can dress it up however you want you can add to it and make it you know a little extra you can do a lot of beans but for this way i just do regular pinto beans now i sort through them take out all the ugly looking beans and you have to like sort through your beans make sure there's no rocks and stuff like that and i rinse them out a couple times just to make sure they're clean from any dirt and stuff like that then i put them on to boil some people like to soak their beans overnight um i don't i really don't know why i don't do that but i don't <laughs> um so i just put them in some water to boil and then i use garlic i use a lot of garlic probably like three cloves of garlic and i put in some salt some caldo de pollo which i haven't put in that yet i put a little bit of salt um i would do that towards the end you guys will see and um what else do i do i put onion in it sometimes i put like some cilantro if i'm feeling extra um but that's really it super easy yeah <laughs> okay so the first thing you are going to need is some you're going to need some potatoes these are what like the golden potato i like to use any type of potato okay you're going to cut those up and you are also going to need some carrots so let's get to chopping the first thing that we're going to do is start peeling the potatoes if you have a vegetable peeler go ahead and use that um, my vegetable peeler is pretty butt so <laughs> we're not gonna use that i just kind of run it through a knife and it works for me all right, so time to cut these bad boys. So the way I cut potatoes, I just kind of slice down like so. Not too thin, not too thick. Also, kind of just want them, I don't know, maybe like an inch apart, I guess. And then I just kind of stack the ones that are like around the same size. I stack them up together like so. And then I just make my little um, slices. I like mine a little um, small, so that's why I'm making mine pretty tiny. Rinse off your carrots and peel them too. Now, when it comes to me chopping my carrots, I gotta kinda make them a little tiny because my husband doesn't like vegetables. Well, he likes vegetables, but he doesn't like big pieces of vegetables. So I gotta kinda disguise them in there. So funny because he's like, I don't like this, but then I like cook it. He doesn't know what's in there. He's like, babe, that was so good. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Talking about you don't like vegetables. Boy, bye. You are too grown for that. 
right, so the next thing that we're going to need is some cebolla. So get you an onion, go ahead and cut that. I had already pre-cut mine the other day. I use onions and I, you know, whatever I have left, I'll save it, cut for later. It's all cut up crazy, but it's okay. All right, so that should be good. I have a little bit of jalapeno left, so I am gonna use that too. Might as well. And that's what I mean when I when I say that like I just be doing my own thing when it comes to cooking, because I literally just be adding stuff like on site. Like, oh, you know what? Maybe I can add that. That sounds good. <laughs> so, yeah. Next to me, I have my pan right here. It's already warm. What I have here is some ground beef. I use the 80-20, um, just because I personally kind of like a higher fat. Um, it's up to you. <laughs> it is one pound. That's what's gonna be good for us. And I'm gonna hurry up and brown this a little bit first before I add everything else. In my pan, I don't add any oil to it because it is higher in um, fat. So don't add any oil to it. Just um, throw it in your pan as is. And the fat will separate from the meat, so you don't gotta worry about that. So just go ahead and break this down first and brown it just a little bit before we go ahead and add some of the other stuff. Here I have my onion and my jalapeno. It's gonna go in. At this time, we are also going to add the potatoes and the carrots too. Let this cook down a little bit, let it do its thing. And while this is doing its thing, we gonna do something else, okay? So we gotta keep it moving here and keep it pushing. Get you a comal. If you don't have a comal, just use a regular pan, doesn't matter. You just need something to roast your vegetables in to make a salsa. We're gonna make a salsa de la mocajete. Now, you don't even need a morcajete. I will tell you guys how to do everything. Now, if you are just a little, feeling a little lazy today, that's fine. <laughs> um, everyone needs a break here and there. Uh, boil everything in some water and put it in a blender. You're good to go. Um, that's up to you. <laughs> that's your business. I do not care. But I'm going to take the extra step today because I love the taste of morcajete salsa. So, when it comes to making salsa, there's so many ways to make salsa. This is just a very simple way, nothing crazy or anything like that. I have two tomates and four serrano peppers. The amount of peppers that you want to use is completely up to you. And I have one, <laughs> this is so sad. I have one habanero right here. Uh, I know, <laughs> you're probably saying, what's the point of having one? I, I swear, if I had more, I would definitely have been using more, but um, I don't, I ran out of all of them and I literally only have one little baby one left, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> and no habanero left behind, okay? Um, just put these on here and come back when they're all burnt on the sides, basically. <laughs> okay, so at this point, all of my veggies have cooked down a little bit. The potatoes and the carrots still have a little while to cook, but once I do the rest, it'll, it'll get to cooking, so don't worry about that. The main thing here that you want to focus on is just making sure that the jalapenos and the cebolla, well, your onions are cooked. Add some salt to it. You, you want to go a little heavy on the salt. And I'm going to add some adobo because that's my jam. That's my stuff. So like that and then a big fan of garlic powder you're also going to use some oregano just a little bit nothing too crazy like so and we're going to use some comino so that is known as cumin oh it's getting all blurry in here okay like that and like that so last but not least we will add some black pepper I'm using a little shaker so <laughs> all right there we go and go ahead and mix that around and let it cook for just a little longer and then we will get started on the next step so over here we are still waiting for the tomatoes to get soft this one for some reason don't want to get soft yet this one's almost there our jalapenos and peppers are all good i just set them onto the side this burner is not on you know that they're ready when they're all soft. When everything's soft, it's ready. In the meantime, between time, get you some tomatoes and some cilantro and go ahead and blend this up. I used four tomatoes. I cut them in fours. It doesn't matter how big or how small you cut them, just as long as you have four tomatoes, big tomatoes. So, see you as you And you guys, I never knew, did you know, you guys, did you know that cilantro in English is coriander?
Because I, I swear I did not know that. I Please don't tell me I'm slow because I just always, I, you always see everywhere and they just call it cilantro. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Anyways, <laughs> so let's just gonna go ahead and blend this up. All right, so to my picadillo, well, part of my picadillo, we are going to add our mix right here. This is the tomates and the cilantro. Go ahead and pour that in. At this point, you can add some water if you'd like. Depending on how I feel about it, I may add just a little bit. But for the most part, I do like mine a little thicker on the thick side. It's really a preference thing. And based off of looking at it, I will add a little bit of water. It looks nasty now. I know it looks sick, but <laughs> I promise it will not stay looking this nasty. Add a little bit of water to my blender just to kind of get the rest of that out. And we are going to go ahead and put that in here. Later on, we will continue to season it, but right now, the important thing for us to do is to just let this cook down. So I'm gonna cover it and let it cook down until everything is nice and soft. As you can see, I already went ahead and started grinding some stuff. Uh, what I grinded was a little bit of onion and some raw garlic. Now, could have, if you wanted to, put on the onion and the garlic on the goman with the rest of the vegetables, but um, I didn't want to. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Like I said, I'm always switching up things, um, but I do kind of like the, the fresh taste of this. Now it's up to you. If you want to do that, you don't have to. So, right now I'm going to grind some of the peppers, and I like to keep the charred part on. That's just me, preference thing. With just one hand, so I'm going to just start like so now if you don't have one of these um you don't need to do this just throw everything in the blender you'd be cool <laughs> it looks the same but i really i really like to do it in here when i got the time when i don't get the time i don't be doing all this <laughs> i'm going to add one whole lime to it i already chopped up some cilantro and put that in there but um i didn't really feel the need to kind of show all that I went ahead and tasted it and clearly I have two left. It's pretty hot right now, which is crazy. Most of the time it's not, but today it is. That's why I be talking about. You just never know with these peppers. Sometimes they're hot and sometimes they're not. That's why it's important to always taste your food. Okay, so this is what the salsa looks like. Really good. If you don't want it too thick, just add a little bit of water to it and you'll be good to go. I'm going to add a little bit of salt right now. And that should be good. This is the salsa that we're gonna use to eat with our gordita. It looks delicious. Beautiful. Get you some maseca, okay? Now, if you want real measurements, here's some measurements right here. They tell you exactly how to do it. It's really not hard. All you gotta do is get your maseca. And this is what you're gonna use to kind of make your tortilla part, I guess, what you call it. All right, put enough in however much you think is good. For me right now, this should be good enough. And you're going to add some hot water to this. When you are doing this, you wanna add your water slowly. Hot water, guys, you want it to be warm. Keep mixing it with your hands until it forms a dough. Way to know that if your dough has enough water is just by pressing firmly and nothing comes off, as you can see. So that's how you know it's good with water. Now, we are going to go ahead and shape them. Depending on how big you want them, it's really up to you. What I'm doing here is just kind of playing with it. I'm gonna form it into a little ball. Literally like you're playing with Play-Doh. <laughs> Use your, your prensa if you want for this and just start going back and forth and back and forth. Keep doing that. The prensa might be a little faster to be honest. <laughs> okay, this is pretty thick, okay. So look. When you make tortillas, I guess, okay, so you cook a little bit on one side, and then what you're gonna do is, after that side is cooked a little bit, but not all the way, you flip it over to the other side, cook that side all the way, and then flip it back over to the other side to finish cooking, and that's when they start to inflate, and that's how you know you have a great tortilla. Quick little tip for you guys. So, <laughs> hopefully that helps. So you make some really bomb tortillas next time. Let me know how it works. It all depends how thick you want them, if you can kind of tell how thick mine are. Um, because you have to slice it in the middle anyways to kind of stuff it. So it just, yeah, just keep that in mind. Look at me over here flipping tortillas with one hand. Let me find out I know what I'm doing. That looks good. This one just got on here. This is what I mean. Cook it, but not all the way on that side, okay? 
And the whole inflating thing mainly happens when you're making um, like thin tortillas. It doesn't really happen when you're making the big um, gorditas like this. Sometimes they do, but you don't really want to cook it all the way, all the way because you want to take some of it out. But the two that I do have done, they're hot. And this is exactly what you do. You want them to be hot. On the thicker side of them, what you're going to do is get a knife and cut right in the middle, the center there, because that's what you're going to use to kind of stuff it. And the knife should go in very easily. It's hot, so watch out with your hands. All right, there you have it. It looks like so. Now, if it's a little thicker, then you want to remove some of the masa that's on the inside, but this one actually looks perfect. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to continue to do that with the rest of them. So this is what it looks like. And that's what I mean when I say that I personally like it a little thick. You want it to be this consistency. Now, if you don't, just add more water. No big deal. And yeah, that's pretty much it on that. <laughs> Let's taste it just to see what it's lacking on. I have a little bit of the carne and a little bit of potato. Checking my tortilla in between. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Okay. Honestly, I think it's pretty good on seasoning, but like I don't want to say that because I always need to add something. Maybe I just add like some garlic. That's crazy. Ooh, that tastes so good. Ooh, I ooh, I did that. Thank you to my mother up in heaven who taught me how to cook. If you knew my mother, like that woman she threw down in the kitchen let me just say that but it's so funny because a lot of people like swear their moms cook the best but i don't know i haven't had any food to top my mom's just saying they look very good like i said um this is just a very basic way of making um pinto beans at least the mexican way so i'm going to add some chicken bouillon seasoning garlo de pollo i'm gonna add a little bit of that now I already went ahead and added everything else so once I'm done adding that I won't need anything else to add to it it should be great in flavor so using the spoon I just ate from I'm going to just taste a little bit of the beans along with some broth that way I know what's needed and ooh that was nasty <laughs> reason why I said that because there's no I need more salt I need to add some salt to that. Mm -mm. You guys probably think I add a hella seasoning to my stuff, which I do, but I, I don't know if it's me that I like a lot of salt or, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but trust me, I swear. You just taste your food, guys, please. That's why it's so hard when people tell me, like, oh, can you put the full recipe in the description box down below? But, like, a lot of this really is according to your taste like what I may like may be a little too much for you and vice versa so just keep in mind of all that I'm only gonna get a little piece here because last time that was sick okay we're perfect now good okay so when it comes to your frijoles you can leave them like this um, and fill up your gorditas like that or you can just do the extra step and make like refried beans um, I was gonna leave them like this, but I decided you know what I want to do the other way So what you're gonna do is take a little bit out like that a little bit make sure you don't get any of the juice I mean you can just not too much And fill it up like so Once it starts cooking down a little bit like that, then you can just start smashing them to your preference. If you want them super smashed, then just keep going. I like them a little smashed, but not too much. And then at that point, if they're too thick for you, once they're smashed, then you can add more broth or water. That's, that's what I mean where I like some of it. Some of it smashed, but not all of it. So that's good for me. And I'm going to leave it like this, and we are going to start filling them to show you guys that i went ahead and made pico de gallo so it's super easy to make all you have to do is just chop up some tomatoes onion cilantro and jalapeno put a little bit of lime juice and some salt and you're good to go now comes the best part we're gonna eat <laughs> i'm gonna eat one of them and i oh fuck that's just hot oh that was so hot okay 
I'm gonna eat one of them. Be careful, guys. I'm gonna eat one of them um, just because my husband's not here yet, and I don't, I don't really want to eat without him. So we are going to start filling this bad boy. So first things first, our gordita, which is right here. We are going to use a little bit of beans. Really doesn't matter what, how you how you do what goes first. People will fill it up with all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to do frijoles first. A little bit like so. Actually, a lot of it. I like them. All right. Bye. Same spoon. I really don't care. And I use a little bit of the picadillo in there like that. That looks delicious. All right. And this is the part where you can really dress it up i guess all right so i have some lettuce some people use repollo up to you so far this is what we're looking like delicious put the dial on like so um what else <laughs> i have some crema here add a little bit of crema it'll come off i like the american crema just because i feel like the mexican crema doesn't really taste like anything don't come for me. That's just how I feel. And then we're going to do a little bit of queso fresco. Like so. Top it off with some salsa. And top it off like that. I would put more, but this thing's already getting heavy. And there you have it. It looks pretty bomb. So now we can start eating. Cheers, I guess. And let's take a bite. Let's try it. You're gonna love this. My mouth is already a mess. And honestly, I'm such a messy eater. The only thing is I shot, I probably should have made some rice or something on the side and I didn't. Very proud of myself with this one. I'm gonna go because I wanna finish eating and I wanna clean up a little bit before we all sit down. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, do what you gotta do, tell your mothers, your friends. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Morte busqué un colmenar. Te llevé de la mano.